LDG Electronics provides state-of-the-art antenna tuners for every amateur need. An LDG desktop tuner works automatically with nearly any station and up to 1,000 watts. LDG power tuners are ideal for portable and mobile use as they consume almost no current and can be powered by internal batteries that last up to a year. LDG tuners are backed by our two-year, fully transferable warranty and our legendary customer service, the best in the industry. Visit us on the web at ldgelectronics.com. And now, from Grid Square Echo Mike 48, this is 100 Watts and a Wire. Well, hello and welcome to 100 Watts and a Wire. My name is Christian. My call sign is Kilo Zero Sierra Tango Hotel, and it is time for us to study the intersection of life and amateur radio. That's what we do here on this show. And on this episode, we're going to do another 30-day review. It should be very interesting. I think so. We're doing uh, software this time, logging software, which is actually a very big topic among hams, is which one, sort of like antennas. We all want to know which one should we get? What should I use? I don't, I don't know. And there's several out there, and they are different prices. There are some free, and they go up from there, depending on what you want to do with yours. Tonight, or today, this afternoon, whenever you're listening to this, we're going to take a look at November 3, Foxtrot Juliet Papa, the logging software, N3FJP. This time around, we have three reviewers. They have their 100-watt IDs, and that makes you eligible to become a reviewer. If you need to know more about getting a 100-watt ID, visit 100wattsandawire.com. Click on the 100-watt IDs. Very simple. Everything is free to you. You just go ahead and Apply for it. In a couple of days, you'll be sequentially issued your 100-watt ID. Then you slide on down on the website to 30 days and enter yourself to be a reviewer. You'll spend a month with a product. We'll send it out to you. You'll come back on the show, talk about it. It's a lottery, so your name will go through a rotation. Try to keep me out of your junk box because that happens. And if somebody can do it, cool, they're in there. If they need to pass because of weather, whatever it is, they can pass. You stay in. You just enter one time. You stay in the pot, and it goes around. So let me introduce you to a couple of people. They're going to be uh, Jane Kilo Delta 2, Oscar Alpha Papa, Brandon Kilo India 5, Mike Juliet Hotel, and Dean. He's Kilo Charlie 1, Mike Bravo Alpha. Now, Dean is a first responder. He's a firefighter. He's working as we record this. So we're going to be, he sent in his criteria, his notes on all these different areas we're going to be talking about with you. So I will uh, read those and then we'll come around and kind of go around the room and see uh, what these ham radio operators feel. These are your peers. This is a peer review. I'm serving as your point guard uh, as we go through this review. All right, we're going to start with Jane. Let's bring up Jane. Hello to Jane. Kilo Delta 2, Oscar Alpha Papa, she won the lottery and went through and has spent 30 days or maybe a, a touch more with N3F JP. Uh, welcome. Thank you for spending some time with us tonight. Jane, how are you doing? You holding up? I'm holding up. Yeah, it's been kind of a, a rough time with COVID and all. We've been through some real hard times. Um, my family, uh, we just pat, uh, lost my brother, mm. um, him of over 50 years. So it's been kind of a sad time. Uh, but uh, when I got your email, I said, that that's a sign. I got to get back on the air. And I'm so happy to have been one of the selected few for this one because it's really an interest of mine. I go back um, a long time with uh, computers, um, primarily for applications for healthcare uh, documentation, as well as uh, trying to simplify things. I've always had uh, an interest in computers in terms of its way to make things easier, uh, not just proliferate a lot of paper that you have to file. <laughs> So. Well, uh, my condolences on behalf of our whole community, our, my condolences uh, for your brother. I know mm -hmm. that's tough. I'm glad you've been inspired, though, and you're mm -hmm. getting uh, more time on the radio. So uh, we'll turn you into a net control operator, net control Jane, coming soon to a frequency near you. Let me stop over and say hello to Brandon. 
Brandon is also here. He's Kilo India 5. Mike, Juliet Hotel, uh, hello to you, sir. Thank you for uh, spending your time and your 30 days with this piece of software. Tell us a little bit about you. What's going on? Uh, not too much. Just just trying to learn learn all I can from this software. It's Like I said, it's my first time uh, working with any software. It's always been paper logs and, and all that. So this was kind of interesting for me to run through it and see what all it can do and still learning what it can do. Yeah, it could take a while, and that's a good thing. I think what this product here, it has a couple of different levels to it. I think you can buy it in pieces. We'll talk about that. That'll be our deal. But this is the full Monty, and uh, we'll talk about that. Let's start with Jane first. Uh, we will we'll go into the criteria of the cost and kind of a cost value uh, with N3FJP. Jane, in terms of cost, now you know what the cost is, and uh, you know the show put this out to you and uh, Brandon and to Dean, so you didn't have to do that. But af- after spending thirty days with the product, knowing that the cost is roughly fifty dollars for the full package, I believe you get any upgrades, right? So tell me what you think in terms of cost. Uh, is it fair? Is it too much? Not enough? What do you think? I think it's absolutely fair. In fact, I, I, I almost feel guilty um, having been gifted um, because it's so worthy of um, support. Um, they're in their 25th year of doing this and they have developed something that's really quite incredibly, uh, I, I would say it's deceptively simple. It looks very, very uh, almost plain vanilla um, but it's, um, it's got so many embedded features and you can use it on so many levels that it's well worth the forty nine ninety nine. It also entitles you not only to upgrades and lifetime support for anything you purchase, but if they release any new uh, programs, you'll get those as well. So it's almost like buying, getting a uh, a key to the executive washroom, you know, um, and they have a son who's actively involved with it. He's um, now um, 32 because he was seven when they started. Mm-hmm. And so they got built in this uh, longevity of hopeful support. Um, Scott and Kimberly are still fairly um, young and healthy. Um, and I hope this goes on for at least 25 more, you know, because it's, it's a beautiful product. Um, the, the smaller components, all this um, contest specific programs are generally about $9. There are things that are free, mostly for um, youth and promoting education. Um, but if you decide to buy only one component, say field day, and then want to buy the whole thing, they subtract that from the total cost if you want to buy the package. So you don't have to then turn around and spend forty nine ninety nine to get the, the whole thing. I they, see. they really get the math. So. so in the beginning, it's almost like making a sandwich. You can choose kind of which, mm-hmm. which avenues you want to go into if right. you don't want to buy the full product. Everything is um, fully functional and, and free to use. If you get the field day um, package, you could actually use it up to 30 contacts. And if you only make 30 contacts field day, that suits you, right? Um, with the, the, the logging software, um, that has a, um, a time um, limit on it. So it, it expires within like a month, I think. Um, but, but otherwise, it, it's really what really well developed um, and it's amazing how much effort they put into it. Um, someone said on one of the reviews, they can't imagine they're making any money doing this. I mean, because of the, the labor, but it is a love and, and a very generous thing to the, the ham community. Well, thank you for that. Brandon, Kilo India five, Mike Juliet hotel, uh, your price breakdown. I know this is a, you mentioned to me. I don't know if you've said it out loud yet, but you're you. This is kind of you were a paper log guy. Um, so if you were in the market, say I don't know if we just kind of pushed you into the market here when you won this lottery uh, to get it. Um, in terms of price, is this something that you would have been looking at this range? What did you make of the pricing for the product? 
Yeah, um, kind of falling back on what Jane had said, uh, when I first first opened it up, it, it did look kind of vanilla to me. It real plain and simple. And then the more I got to messing with it, it um, it really you see what it can actually do. The mount you can customize. I think if it had something that was more flashy, it'd be a lot harder to customize it and do what you want to do with it. Let me get, let me come back here and I'll, I'll ask you guys uh, just a quick follow up to that. Do you think it, the product at this price point, and we'll go over and ask Jane, uh, do you think most people are buying this sort of piecemeal effort or, or all you, do you think people are mostly diving in, you know, cause it, there is a lot to get used to. Do you think most people are the entry way in is through the free and then sort of adding on? I think my entry was field day and only because my club uses it. I think they've used it for more than 12 years. Um, I asked and they weren't quite sure. I'm not sure it, where that information is in the archives of our, mm -hmm. uh, our minutes. Um, but they, they didn't even know the password um, when the new secretary came in uh, 10 years ago, uh, 12 years ago. And he, he, contacted Scott and they provided the, the password. Um, that was my first field day. It was 2019. I was so awed, struck with the whole experience. I didn't know what I was looking at. I didn't know what I was hearing. It's a wonder um, I could pick out call signs, but I could recognize how very simple that was. And I've subsequently used it for field day, but I was one Delta because of COVID. Um, and I was doing great. I mean, I, I just really enjoyed it. Um, and I said, got to look into the rest of it. And I wasn't even looking at the, um, the logging software, which has been an issue because I paper log and there, it takes me so long to get the information to make sure it's accurate, you know, and then to go back and, and then, you know, the whole organizing and, and it would be so simple with the database. So. Brandon, oh, I'm sorry. In, Go ahead, Jane. I'm sorry that people probably see it and might get intrigued. Gotcha. To buy the whole thing. Brandon, as a paper log guy, would you be more inclined to piecemeal this together, or would are you the kind of guy that say, "Give me the whole thing"? Uh, I would probably do "Give me the whole thing." Just whenever you start looking down, okay, well, you might buy one. Okay, you buy two. Well, now you're getting close to what you would have paid if you just bought the full price. And I think that would have been, that'd be the way to go is just buy the, the full collection of everything that they had. It's, it's hard to beat where you get all the updates and all that sort of stuff with it. I want to uh, share Dean, what Dean wrote. Dean is Kilo Charlie one, Mike Bravo alpha. He is a first responder, a hero out on the front lines who is uh, working as we record. So thank you to Dean. Uh, and this whole cohort, he's part of this cohort here. He's just uh, unseen uh, for and unheard. But his words are here. He says, I think the price is fair for the software. Uh, they give you several options of what you want to buy into. Uh, so reading into that, just to kind of echo what has been said here, uh, you can kind of uh, buy into different things. You could buy the full Monty. So that's a, a good look at the price point here for November 3, Foxtrot, Juliet, Papa. Now let's go into the media types. Now this is something I don't know. I don't have this software. I'm not a user of the software. So I'm learning uh, with our audience here at 100 Watts and a Wire. And go over to Jane and we can talk about how this came along. Was this sort of a, a download or was it a CD? Tell us a little bit about how this all works after you make the purchase. Um, it was a CD back in 2004. I'm not sure what it was before that. It might have been, um, you know, a floppy disk for all I know. Um, I, I really didn't go back that far. Um, the manual that they have um, available that goes back to that time talks about this, the CD. Um, but now it's just uh, electronic download and it's quick. Um, it's seamless, very comprehensive. There's installation instructions on the website as well as within the program. Um, so, all right, cool, very nothing, simple. Nothing to, nothing to lose, you know. It's just all download. right there. <laughs> what do you think, Brandon? A, a man who gets around and spends some time on, on the road there. What do you think? Quick and easy. Yeah, it was. It was fairly simple. Uh, it. 
I think it could have been maybe a little easier if you get the full package to to download, but I could see where that would be where people that don't want the full package would make it harder just to okay. download. But that was the only thing I seen with it that was kind of a pain was just the the downloading each individual one trying yeah, to see. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, let's see what uh, Dean, he says he received an email uh, with a needed link and all the passwords needed to get the program up and going. Uh, this included passwords for the extras and full access to all available options, contest logs, QSO party, uh, et cetera. So uh, anything more to add there, Jane, uh, to your cohort's yeah. thoughts? Just that when I saw that email, I thought, oh, my goodness, I got to remember all those passwords. <laughs> <You know? laughs> um, and, and that's not really true. Um, you have to put them in to register each component. But once it's in there, it it automatically reads it when you, you load it. So you don't have to keep rechecking. But it's a good idea to store that in a safe place. Um, I think they keep very good records, um, but you don't want to have to rely on going back to the developer. Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. Any additional notes on that, Brandon? Oh, that was kind of my same feelings, too. When I seen, <laughs> seen all the registration keys, I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> they just say, here, here you go. Yeah. There's everything there. Take it. <laughs> enjoy. <laughs> good luck. Good luck with it, yeah. And we'll talk a little bit more uh, about maybe some of the... Um, tech support later, if needed. Uh, we'll go into that. Uh, let's go into um, the, me let's see, we did the media type. Let's talk about the platforms. Uh, I'm a Mac user, so I don't believe I could use this here, but let's take a look and find out what sort of, um, what platforms are supported with November 3, Foxtrot, Juliet, Papa. Uh, Jane, what are they working with over there? Basically, it's it's Windows based, uh, but they go way back. Uh, right now, the active uh, programs work on sys on Windows seven through eleven. They've okay. brought in eleven. I don't even have eleven running yet. Um, and one of the reasons why they don't go beyond uh, back beyond seven is because th some of the uh, internet downloads require at least Win seven. So that's what they do. However, um, they do talk about other platforms, other operating systems. Um, they say um, Windows Surface users, which I'm, I'm not even familiar with. Um, and they, you can get versions of XP, Vista, and pre-XP uh, on their website. They're very generous with providing archival information. Um, but Mac users have been able to use this using parallel hmm. uh, or parallels, plural. And even Linux users offer installation advice and they provide all the links for these things. So if you wanted to check it out, Christian, go for mm -hmm. it. <laughs> don't, don't taunt me. I will. I'm seeing now I'm falling in love. I fall in love too easy. Brandon, what'd you load this up on? Uh, I've loaded it up on Windows 7. Um, or actually, no, Windows 10 on this one. Okay. Uh, I didn't realize until actually a couple of days ago that you could run it on Linux when I got to digging into a little bit of the manuals. Uh, I'd like to try that to see how it runs. It, I think you can run it running through Wine. Now, can you can you add this on to any other devices too? I mean, you have the passwords. Can you download this onto other machines too? Or is it from just sort of like... A... Can, from what I can see, I think you can put it on whatever you have, you've got pretty much the keys to it to, okay. to download to whatever device you have on it. I don't okay. think it's specific to one machine. Okay. Well, that's good to know. Cause you next, next thing you know, you drop, drop your machine on the floor. It seems like you could download that, mm -hmm. right? Uh oh, here we go. Here's a story. Go ahead, Jane. You can even network all of the computers in your house. Oh, look at this. <laughs> so you can go from room to room to room and check your log. <laughs> Got it. Okay. Well, that's cool. That's cool yeah. to me. All right. Very good. And let's go over to what Dean, he's Kilo Charlie One, Mike uh, Papa. Uh, nope. He's a uh, Casey One, Mike Bravo Alpha. He loaded this up um, on Windows. He only used Windows for the evaluation. And that was his note. Okay. We're taking a 30 day look 
at a piece of logging software. It's called November 3 Foxtrot Juliet Papa N3FJP. And uh, it, uh, it's a logging software. And we're getting the full skinny. We've got three operators who are your peers giving you information. And maybe this is a system for you. Maybe it's not. Let's find out about the manual. If there was a manual, even. Uh, Jane, uh, getting this thing started, getting it up, did they give you any uh, good tech information within the package? Yes, um, probably too much. Because <laughs> as I said, it's a 30 plus day exploration because there's just so much. There is a written manual that was um, developed by users and it's in um, Microsoft Word as well as PDF format, but it goes back to 2004. It's a little dated in terms of the change. I mean, they were they were using it for, um, I believe it was uh, version 2.5 at the time, and now they're up to 7. Um, so there's been a lot of changes and upgrades. Um, but it's still a good, valuable reference that you can download. There's lots of screenshots, uh, lots of explanation mm. about things. Um, it's worth looking at. Um, but they primarily look at um, work on online um, help. Um, F F the FAQs are fantastic if you start with that. Um, that's like a real good um, quick start, but it's a long read. Mm. You know, it's but it's well organized in terms of topics. Um, they have YouTube videos on basic components about the program that are, I've watched most of them and they're um, really uh, well done. I have to go back and do some of them. Um, there's a user group. Um, they've been active since 2003 and they're very quick to, uh, to share. Um, they um, provide all kinds of feedback. There's a live a uh, bot, a robot called Juliet on the on the website, and she answers all kinds of questions um, very thoroughly. So you don't have to join the user group because they proliferate a lot of email. Um, and I don't know if oh. it's an, a group's IO. If they, if they don't have a digest, you can get swamped um, because in January they had like 684 postings. Um, so they're a pretty active group and they're worldwide. Um, and they promise um, quick response. Um, Scott and Kimberly respond within 24 hours during the week. Um, they actually are faster. They respond to 12 hours on the weekend. So Very good. Well done. Well, Brandon, now is this the sort of thing, like a guy like me, I might be one of those hams, I don't know, who reads the manual, but this seems like, <laughs> you know, going from a... Uh, paper log to something like this what did you think of the manual was it too much was it uh, like was it make it nuts yeah. or how was it when you first look at it yeah it's it's a lot and it, it can seem overwhelming but one of the tips in the in the manual was just get on the program and use it and when you run into an issue then then look for the manual and like jane was saying the live bot was really helpful you could any question you just type a question in and it would go right there to the list of all the frequently asked questions and made it made it a lot easier to kind of digest through the manual. It's cool that they've got some YouTube videos for those specific. That's how I actually use YouTube is when I want to learn something really specific about something because I'm impatient. We're all impatient. We just want to know, just tell me what to do. So it's good to know they've got that and all that support and the, and the support group there. That's, uh, that's good to set up such an infrastructure or community based right. around there's that. A lot, there's a lot of guys on YouTube that have they put together some nice videos on how to customize it, do different things to set it up. And all right, cool. It's a good community around it. All right. Let me, uh, let me check on Dean here. KC one MBA. He says there was no printed manual, which I like the website had all the needed information that he needed uh, to get the program working. They had uh, video links, which were a great help setting up the program and linking to his radio. So there you go, the, the manual there. Seems very helpful, very thorough on the N3FJP logging software. All right, now we're going to get into the part where the ease of use. Let's talk about this. Uh, Jane, you seem like you've got a pretty good grip on the computers and the systems and that sort of thing, but let's talk about this and 
Uh, was it easy for you? You said it was uh, deceptively easy, or I don't know, I'm paraphrasing what you said now. What did you say about the ease, ease of deceptively use? Deceptively simple. I mean, okay. it looks like it's like there's nothing. And yet, whoa, you start to delve into it, and they got digital here, and they got the uh, the rig uh, interface there, and uh, CW interface, and and uh, you know connection to all the uh, the uploading, the the importing, and the exporting of files. Um, they're telling you how to make things. Um, if you don't, uh, if you want to use, uh, I forget, they, they gave a schematic for something for um, CW. They'll give you schematics and uh, all kinds of diagrams for developing antennas. I mean, they're wow. so generous. Um, it's amazing. But I, I like it because you're able to use this without read this first. You know, I do. I'm somebody that likes to read. I like to have books and papers. I mean, it's once I got into ham radio, I think I've uh, destroyed any um, semblance of order with bookcases because <laughs> there's no room. Um, there's really no learning curve initially. You can get in there and do what you need to do. And then it kind of grows with you, I think, as you get more comfortable with it. And I think as a, as a new ham or somebody who doesn't have specific um, criteria for what they have to have, um, this is, a, is an ideal and very um, doable program. Um, it, other than having all those passwords, which was you know, like the, my initial reaction, like, oh, no, um, they, they even go back to some of the, the old day techniques of uh, keyboard shortcuts hmm. so that you don't even have to use a mouse. Um, and I like this, this customization that can be done with the fields. Some of the things can't be changed, like the, uh, I believe the, the, the field length, um, has to stay as is, but basically it's, it's, it's very nice. I've used the, the field day, the winter field day and the, uh, VHF, uh, contest, um, for our, uh, Friends who will watch this later on, of course, our our, uh, our podcast listeners are listening to this straight through. Uh, down the line here in a few days or next week, we'll start to roll these out for our YouTube channel audience. And you can go see, you know, Pastor Joe, he came and said, you know, you should try this, this uh, software. You might like it. He loves it, right? He sent me some things today. And you talk about customization. Uh, I'm going to put up a couple of photos that you can see as you listen you can go back later and maybe see some of this. And Brandon sent some images as well. But speaking in terms of customization here, you can see Pastor Joe has, uh, he's got that signal information, his signal. Uh, he's got one, uh, uh, I don't know if you would call this a channel, but an entry for 100 watt IDs, the country. And he, he seems to think these are very easy to kind of drag in and and uh, drag and drop. Was that true for you, Jane? Is that how that works? You can customize it that way? Uh, but it's actually check boxes and, and you uh, oh. move them around. It's, okay. it's, not, uh, it's not the same kind of like a touch screen where you can pull things um, because of the way it's programmed. Um, gotcha. But it's all uh, very easy to do. Um, you just... Uh, if you don't like the order of something, you can make it secondary. Um, you can you can not have it display, um, but uh, you can. I believe um, I didn't try it, but I believe you can even change the font size, hmm. um, which is uh, important in terms of uh, people with disabilities, and they they do address that in terms of uh, having um, you know some components for. Uh, uh, visually impaired, and and that's first start. You know, larger fonts. Good. All right, Brandon. It, it's fun to talk to you because uh, I'm not too far away from mm -hmm. where you are, Jane. It's of course it's a blast to talk to you too. But in the terms mm -hmm. of being a new uh, to digital guy, I was a paper guy, and going into the new piece of software kind of freaked me out a little bit. I thought I may lose a lot of these things. It was going to take a lot of time to get these things put in there. Back then, I had about a thousand contacts and I had to transfer into the digital thing. And it, it kind of was, it was a little nutty. But just diving into a new piece of software, I did have this feeling, and I wonder if you did too, that 
I don't know if I'm going to fully commit and submerge my whole book here. You know, is there a feeling, a little hesitation about diving in? Uh, there was because, like I said, I'm new to new to the digital logs as well as being new to, to ham radio. I've only been licensed about two years, so I, it's it's all new to me. So that's kind of where this was. I really didn't know what I didn't know. So that's where the software kind of, the more I play with it, I'm like, wow, this is, I should have been doing this from the beginning. Well, that's good. So you got a good feeling out. And once you got started and you started to put them in, you're like, oh, man, what have I been missing here? This is, yeah, mm-hmm. see, I was kind of on the, on the fence the other side. I thought, mm-hmm. like some of my mentors, my Elmers, were paper guys, and they were still, they're going to go down as paper guys. Mm-hmm. And uh, for them, thinking of the digital, and maybe this is just a hurdle in our minds, um, or at least mine then, it was that I could possibly lose this, or what happens if I get a power outage? Am I going to lose my log, or what happens if my computer falls in the bathtub? You know, these liked, stupid these things. Yeah. You think. I, I liked because it automatically saves everything. You don't have to to do anything. You just roll through, I'll, and it's it automatically logs the time. It with rig control, it sets up to where you can. Uh, it's got your frequency, your band, all that. So it's it's less for me to have to try to when I'm going through trying to make contacts to less stuff to try to remember to write down. You sent some photos. I want to share these with the folks that'll come back later on to see it on YouTube. And uh, just so you guys can see visually what this looks like on your screen here. Uh, thank you for sending these images here. I think you, you worked on field day. You use this out in the field, right? Yes, I did. Yeah. That's every, that's my QTH is outside. <laughs> so oh, great. Okay. everything, everything I've done has been, been portable. So it's, uh, it's been interesting. It makes it a lot easier. I did. I've never really thought I'd get into contesting or doing anything like that, but starting to get into more of the POTA end of it. And this is making it a whole lot easier. And this mm-hmm. can be interfaced with logbook of the world, right? You can, uh, mm-hmm. you can integrate that. Maybe that's part of our, uh, that's another part of the criteria, perhaps. But I just want to go through and show some of your um, the photos that you sent there so people who go back and look at this uh, can kind of see what it would look like on your screen. I like the big chunky boxes. I don't know. Maybe I'm hitting that age where my I need these uh, visuals to be so big and, and clean. I just like a clean presentation. You know, it's kind of my... That's, that was me. I thought it was kind of plain at first, but then I was like, I like the simplicity. It makes it a lot easier, especially if you're out there in the dark and trying to maneuver around everything and make sure you've got all your boxes checked that you need. And you're trying to log fast. Uh, let's see what the uh, Dean, uh, the other member of your cohort says, KC1 MBA. Uh, the first real test I put it through uh, was NAQP. I downloaded the contest log, which was easy to do. I ran a contest for about five to six hours. Uh, with only one reoccurring issue. The call sign field at times wanted to default to another call sign for some reason. I also used it for several days of normal logging for single sideband QSOs and uh, uh, did not get a chance to use it with uh, WSJTX software I used this weekend for the uh, Vermont QSO party. Uh, uh, Let's see, with issues. Let's see. So that's what he said. So he's uh, he had a he had a little glitch there. He wanted to default when he was uh, putting in a call sign there for some reason. But um, we can talk about tech support and all that sort of stuff. We've already learned that uh, they're very responsive. The team there at N3FJP. Uh, so that's Dean's input on ease of use. All right, for the 30-day review criteria, moving on now with N3FJP. We're looking at the hardware requirements for this software. Uh, Jane, did it take anything specific, any specific hardware? Uh, not really. Um, it, if you're running Windows of any of those versions, they say that your computer will have enough hardware to, to manage it all. And uh, I have a fairly uh, recent uh, Dell laptop and I didn't have any problems. However, um, I did want to get to rig control, which is in the next item. So maybe I'll talk about that then, okay. um, or I can start to do it now. And it was about the, you know, the cable, 
Where's my cable? Where's my well, cable? let's just do it. This is a, it's sort of an external, it's a thing. Let's, uh, we'll dig into the nuts and bolts a little bit. Go ahead. There, there's, a, there's a video on uh, the rig interface and it's really good. It's with um, one of the, uh, the Lee children. She's a little older now, mm -hmm. um, Hannah Faith, and she's got a, a ICOM 7300 like I have. And uh, she just takes the cable and she goes, boing, boing, and it works. <laughs> <laughs> However, oh, she... what they don't say is there's a driver that you have to load. Uh, for, and you got to go to ICOM. And then you've got, you know, some people don't realize you have a 30-bit machine, you have a 64-bit machine. You know, I've used a lot of computers. I'm like, what are you? You know, so I had to check. Oh, it's a 64. Okay, that would make sense because it's a, a more recent computer. Um, but what I don't have on the USB cables that I have, um, it's an AB cable, but I don't have the ferrite um, choke on either end. And I had some difficulty um, and I thought it was intermittent um, internet. Um, I thought it was something I did. Maybe I didn't download the right driver. It was a simple thing as I turned the radio off and it closes the port. So I didn't know that. I didn't have enough background in, in terms of familiarity with COM ports, uh, which is software driven, um, also hardware um, specific in terms of the connection. Um, but that's that's what it was. Um, I think that was my, my biggest thing. Um, my club has networked um, for, for quite some time now. And they the problems that they had were only uh, self-inflicted, they said. It was a mix of uh, different window versions as well as subpar computers. They've tried to make them really compatible now and everything's working seamlessly. So. Okay. Do your thing. If you got to do something, go ahead. Uh, mute you, and we'll go over to Brandon if you if you have to do that. Brandon, let's talk about hardware. Did you have to? Uh, now I've I've got some old. It's got me thinking here. I've got an old PC. Like uh, some of the older folks in our and our family will uh, understand. Chitty chitty bang bang. I'm talking about old broken up machines. Uh, that's the only thing I'd have available to download this thing on now. What did you? Uh, what did you think in terms of hardware, things that you would need making those connections? Uh, like like Jane said, anything that will run Windows uh, will run this. I, I'm running it on a older, probably about a 2011 Dell laptop because I didn't want to take the good one out outside with me, banging it around. Right. So I, I just threw it on an old one that I had, and it's it runs fine. Rig control runs well with it. Um, I did run into some issues with uh, getting it integrated with WS JTX had some issues there with it, trying to share the COM ports. And that was a little work through to get through, but got through it. Okay. So it's, it's probably just a, a mixture between a user error and, and a slight learning curve and getting, getting the right things plugged in. I want to share what Dean had to say, uh, KC1 MBA. He said, I installed it on an older Windows computer and have no issues running the software. Anyone with a new computer ha should have no issues. Uh, he talked a little bit about integration on his end too. This part took some time and video watching uh, to get set up. I'm by no means a computer person when it comes to deep diving into programs and I had no major issues setting up uh, the program. Uh, so that's good to know. There you go. That's a that's a bit from our friend uh, Dean in this cohort. And uh, kind of coming down to the uh, the last, and then we'll wrap it up and, and maybe even give it an overall rating here in our system. A 30-day review of the N3 FJP moves into uh, the tech support and the the review, the overall rating. We're doing it here, sort of a 5.5 five to 5.9, five you know, so nobody ever really gets a terrible signal, 5.5 five to 5.9. Five Let's go over to Jane and talk about some of the tech support because... And what she said a little earlier seems to lead to the fact that she spent some time at least communicating uh, with headquarters of N3FJP. What do you think, Jane? I think it's it's really great. And if you can't join the uh, the user group because you're afraid of all those emails, which I think could be consolidated to a daily digest. So you just get the listing. And if you want to go in and look at them, you can. Um, they have a software announcement only group, which would enable you to get specific updates 
just from the developer, um, no, no users. So that's, they don't send that out very often, and that's really great. Um, I really think that the online um, support, either in the website as well as in the program, are, are fantastic. I mean, you could spend a long time just looking at the FAQs. Um, the, uh, and then they, depending upon where you are on the website, um, they have different tabs. And I, uh, I made a comment that I'd like to have a, um, a site map because you don't realize how much is actually there unless you're looking tab by tab and spending a lot of time. Mm. Um, they have um, help on digital quick steps, which goes into all the different digital modes. I haven't even done that. I just do um, phone. I do single sideband. Sure. I've done some um, um, AM. Um, so and and FM with the the, uh, the nets, but uh, basically it's it's just talk. Um, but tips and tricks, and uh, they tell you how to set up for a contest, what to do beforehand. But they keep repeating, "Don't panic," <laughs> which is a great thing for non-technical people. Uh, my approach has always been, "Don't cry, go to bed. You know, <laughs> rest up, see what it's like in the morning." Because I always get so upset and. Uh, my brother was always the one I went to for uh, computer help. And um, so now it's, uh, it's incum incumbent upon me to, to figure it out, right? Um, but the, uh, they're always taking suggestions from the users. So if you have an idea, no matter how crazy it sounds, you send it to them. And they're very, very receptive. Really um, cool. Brandon, uh, it seems like this company has taken the time to try to meet you where you are. I mean, with the YouTube videos, if you're a YouTube guy and that's where you go, I want to fix my toilet or I want to fix whatever, I want to learn how to paint something, that's kind of where I go. You know what I mean? Do, do you get the feeling that their, their tech support first, did you have to use it too? Uh, do you think that that's what they're really trying to do is make so much available for you to kind of meet you where you are i think so i did um i didn't actually have to reach out and contact anybody everything i was able to do was through the frequently asked questions and everything that they had there that was they did put a lot of time and effort into making sure that all the questions were there and like i said you could hit the chat bot it would take you right to what you needed and it seemed great uh i had some issues like i said getting it linked up with w uh WSJTX to run the digital. Once that was set up, it, it made a big difference because you could, it made that program work better because it linked the log. So you could tell who you've made contacts with, who you haven't. It would highlight them different colors for for how your log was set up. Well, good. And you know what? I'm going to do a hybrid here because I have uh, Dean. Dean uh, went into a couple other things that we can talk about too. He had a couple issues and a couple of suggested improvements. And I'll come back around and then we'll get your rating. So let me give uh, his tech support. He said he only um, used the supplied videos available uh, on the website and YouTube. So he's a YouTube video learner, uh, which is cool. Uh, Issue-wise, we'll come back around with issues and some suggested improvements, if there are any, and kind of bring it home with our, uh, our ranking, our overall rating system here. Issues, other than the noted uh, ones he said earlier that he had, uh, was getting logbook of the world to work and downloaded and uh, updating the logs. I still have issues with this, and it seems a little confusing to me. I know logbook of the world can be very difficult to navigate and work, so this is uh, this may be more of a logbook of the world issue. Not sure uh, that he's going to be working it out here. He's going to try. Uh, he gives some suggested improvements here. Uh, he says, number one, uh, have a map showing uh, the QSO location. So uh, some softwares do have that map that'll show you. You can break it out, put it in a different window. He mentions that. Uh, he also mentions um, QRZ log integration. Uh, it's much easier to use than Logbook of the World, in his opinion. And uh, Dean, KC1, Mike Bravo Alpha, he would give it a 5.9 overall rating of five nine 
Turning things back over to Jane, KD2OAP. Along that vein, any uh, issues? Any? Uh, we talked a little bit about the connectivity, not a major issue for you, but perhaps you have some suggested improvements for, uh, for the team and then your overall rating. Yeah, there's a map in field day. Um, I didn't Ooh. look to see if there were maps in other things, and they're color-coded as you get the different uh, uh, sections, which is really kind of neat. I printed out a map uh, from the Internet, and I, I was coloring it in. Um, I'd like to be able to print that out, and I'm not sure you can. And I wasn't able to do screenshots within the program, um, and, and maybe I'm not doing something right. So... There are times where you get a, a pop-up menu um, or you have something and you, you just want a screenshot, and that's what I would like to, to have if possible. Um, there's also um, mention of a WX WARN software, which is a weather program, which sounds really mm-hmm. interesting. It's one of the, uh, the tabs on the uh, website, except... I don't think it's um, being supported anymore. So when you get there, you, you get this wonderful thing and you can't download. And there's a couple of missing links. Um, there's a, um, a call um, download that you can do. And they say you use this because if you go to the FCC and you go to Great Britain to do the separate ones, those are very large downloads but you're missing that one link where it's consolidated. So um, it might be a, might be an issue. Um, I've, I can see how this might not be a a program that if you're doing multiple op logging uh, on, and you, other than like a a contest, um, it might not work. Um, Some of the commercial and other, even free um, site, um, excuse me, software, um, have sat- satellite or rotor control, but I'm 100 watts in a wire, so I don't care about rotors, and um, I'm not up to satellites yet. So um, for me, this this really works. Um, I, I think it's um, really, truly a modest cost for the amount of effort that's gone into this, and I, I like to support um, endeavors that are, are this uh, courageous, you know, and, and ongoing. I have software that I've used since 85 that started out as uh, shareware and I became a licensed user simply because it, it just, it, it makes sense, you know, to support the, the developer. Um, so I'm giving it a, um, a five, nine plus, you know, I'm going over. <laughs> I think good. they deserve it. Thank you for that. Branding, Kilo India 5, Mike Juliet Hotel. Uh, any suggested improvements that you can uh, offer the developers as they go ahead and uh, tweak things or, or anything like that and your overall rating? Uh, I, I think overall it's it's put together pretty nice. Uh, I did have some issues as well going through Logbook of the World. Uh, I think it was more user error because I finally worked out, didn't have the right things selected that I needed to. Um, whenever I noticed you can integrate through uh, API, you can use Grid Tracker, uh, JT Alert, FL Digi, all of those will interface with this. Uh, if you can get all your COM ports to share like they're supposed to and, and get everything working. So you can you can get a map with it, it through Grid Tracker. But um, like I said, just getting, getting the COM port stuff set up, that was, that was what was the tricky part for me. Okay. All right. And I think overall, I give it a five, nine plus as well. Cause it's, it's, it's a lot there and there's a, still a lot that I haven't discovered with it that I'm still learning. I'd like to put it on a Linux machine, see how that, how that runs. That's pretty impressive here. Three, five by nines, three, five by nine. So this quote co- cohort here uh, for the November three Fox, Foxtrot Juliet Papa logging software, uh, they all dig it. They all dig it. It seems like a uh, a, a worthwhile investment, and uh, I appreciate you guys. Is there anything we missed? Jane, I know you've got something more. What did we miss? <laughs> well, it, it links with lots of things, and you can uh, import things from uh, QRZ, uh, which would be great because that's where I put my, my digital um, log. And, but that 
require a, a, a subscription, but you don't have to get the premium. You can get the basic um, HML. Um, there are opportunities there to upgrade your ham license if you want or encourage other people. Um, there's, uh, th there's just so much. I mean, it's just amazing um, what they've done. Um, and I, I look forward to using it. I really do. I thank you for, for pulling me out of the, the lottery hat. Oh, thank you for doing it. Uh, Brandon, did we miss anything? Any, any add-ons, any additions? Uh, no, I think, I think that pretty much covers it. It, uh, trying to go through my notes and see what, um, the only thing I, I would like to see is maybe like Jane was saying, get it up to where you could link straight to QRZ with it as well, like you do with Logbook of the World and ES, uh, EQSL. Okay. Um, but everything, no, everything seemed to, to work really well with it. So last question is, why am I not in your log right now? Don't make us turn on the radio right now. I need to be in this log. we got to figure yeah. that out. Yeah. Well, thank you guys so much uh, for spending your time and with that. Enjoy that software. Really appreciate you um, taking the time. And a real true peer review makes so much more sense to me than just one person uh, trying to show you, you know, this is your peers. This is a peer group of our community who they're uh, sharing with you what they found. And it's an honest uh, peer review. So my thanks to you, Jane, Kilo Delta 2, Oscar Alpha Papa, and Brandon, Kilo India 5, Mike, Juliet Hotel, and Dean, a member of the cohort who is a frontline, uh, he's a firefighter. So he's out there uh, doing it uh, today. Kilo Charlie 1, Mike, Bravo, Alpha, Enjoy that software. Thank you so much for um, all your time. I really appreciate you. I want to tell the members of our community, too, if you're interested in this, there's really no pre... Well, there is a prerequisite, I guess you would call it. All you need is a 100-watt ID. Uh, that gets you hooked up to the mailing list. I send out a weekly note just to invite you to come out and then join us on the live streams, um, what, what's going on. And everybody gets that stuff first. So you can get that at 100wattsandwire.com. And I don't bombard you with a lot of stuff. Uh, but it's good when you get a 100-watt ID, go to 30 days, register to be a reviewer, like you heard here uh, today on this show. And uh, it's easy. It's free. You come on and do the show, and then you keep whatever the product is. It's just that simple. And you only need to do it once. When we go through the cycle, you may see our friends here again on another product. Uh, so that's basically how it all works. All right, well, try to, uh, try to enjoy yourself and get on the air as much as you can. And uh, maybe check into the software, poke around, see if it's something for you. I hope you enjoyed this review. I sure did. I'm enlightened. I need to get my, uh, my little computer and uh, set up, and it seems like it'd be really perfect. I could take my old computer out into the field, uh, you know, activate a park, something like that, have that out there. They've got me intrigued on this. All right, friends. Uh, by all means, if you can, please try and stay above the noise. And we'll see you next time. 73. To join the 100 Watts in a Wire community, visit 100wattsinawire.com.